Good morning, everybody. My name is Adam That's Handler. I am your case handler. It is uh, Wednesday, uh, June 10th, 2020. And the good news for you is that you are now officially cruising with the case handler. Shows by a show by attorneys. We are Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. For those of you listening live on 93.5, good morning. Thank you for spending some time with us. We hope we make it worth your while. Maybe you're on your way to work. Maybe you're just walking around. Maybe you're on Facebook. I don't even know where anybody is these days, but you should know that we are here for you. And that's the most important thing to get out there. We are a law firm that's been 100% uh, up and running since the pandemic hit, uh, settling personal injury cases. Uh, dealing with immigration matters, criminal matters, matrimonial matters, real estate matters. We've been uh, really cranking it out these past three months, and we are looking forward to our reopening at 225 Broadway on the third floor. Our phone number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Once again, my name is Adam Handler. I am your case handler, and I'm here for you because you have one chance to get it right, one choice of attorney, and we here at PPID are going to knock it out of the park for you if you ever need a good lawyer that really cares. With me this morning is the host of the show, David Squeeze Anarchy. Good morning, David. Good morning, and thanks for holding it down, man. I had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but nothing that David Anarchy could not resolve. And thank you so much for uh, steering the ship, you know, all of that. Thank you so much, Mr. Case Handler. How are you feeling today, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I heard you had a little bit of FOMO yesterday. Oh, on what part? Well, you know what FOMO is, right? Yeah, fear of missing okay. out. Exactly. Well, you know, I had, uh, get, am I my I host yet? A little. I'm, not... I'm being sarcastic. A little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little. Well, for, I'm like, for, nobody invites me, me, me anywhere. Me, I'm like, okay. Me, Give me some hosting. Uh, give me some hosting privileges here. Um, yeah, like I said, you know we're uh, we're looking to reopen our office uh, any day now. As soon as we get the green light, of course, we won't be doing it in the same manner um, as as before. At least for right now, you know PPE and and social distancing, and of course, uh, we will have uh, you know half of us in the office and half of us home or a third and two thirds. I don't know how we're doing it, but you know, I haven't seen my staff in, in, in months. And these are people that I've worked, you know, Sandra Taylor, my, my, my paralegal, I've been with her or we've been together rather for, for 11 years. And I just needed to see them all. And I didn't want to do it uh, in the office wearing all this masks and everything. I wanted to do it in, in a backyard. So uh, give me some sharing privileges, David. Come on. I want to show you a picture. I want to show you what we did see, yesterday because I it was really great. Saying, you know, yeah, rub it in, you know, just go ahead. Rub it in. We had, we had the personal injury department um, at my at my house yesterday in my backyard. Uh, we ordered some great food. Uh, this is actually, uh, oh boy, uh, this is a picture uh, that we took um, yeah. you know, right, right when, when, when things were getting going. Uh, you know, uh, it was it was a really great day. We actually uh, catered in from a, a jerk chicken truck. You know, that's uh, our preference of food. We can never agree on what food to order to the office, but whenever somebody proposes uh, West Indian cuisine, uh, we, we usually have a, a pretty good uh, pretty good uh, uh, vote in favor of it. So that's what we did. It was awesome, and it was awesome seeing everybody. And most importantly, we're all ready to get back into work, uh, get back to the office energized. And, uh, you know, since March 1st, we've settled, I think it's 38 cases, 38 cases wow. over $12 million for the year. Um, certainly doing and continuing to do some really special things here at the personal injury department of PPID. Again, our, our phone number is 844-774-3529. That's 844 844- PPID law. And I'm really curious to know what's been going on in the immigration department. If you were to sum it up over the, over the past three months, Conrad and Nelson, what would you say um, PPID has been doing with respect to the immigration issues? Um, are you referring to the response, the outpouring of love and devotion that we've received from the community that we're 
focusing on at the moment. It could be, it could be that. It could what? be working what? on what? cases. What? Okay. I don't know. If, if, so, if somebody, <laughs> well, what? So, somebody, so, I don't know, somebody says well, to you, hey, uh, Maestro, you know, what's, what's the immigration department been up to these past three months since the pandemic? What would you say to them? Well, I've been working on a lot of new songs. Uh, <laughs> um, we've been busy. You know, uh, I, I, we've been on the radio now for going on three months, I think. I, I've lost track exactly when our, our first show was, but um, we've uh, made it, I believe, a substantial uh, uh, inroads into, the, into working with this community that we're uh, addressing at the moment. And we've gotten, I can't even tell you how many calls and, 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 signs of, of appreciation from people and signed up a lot of new cases. Uh, and I think we've helped a lot of people, um, uh, plenty of people, as we say every day, uh, I, I probably, I would say a majority of the calls we get are from people that have either tried to do the cases on, the, on their own or had friends helping them or neighbors or, or rotten lawyers, you know, you know, there are a few out there. Um, and we've been able to steer a lot of people in the right direction. Do I, do I, uh, am I speaking correctly, Nelson? No, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I have been pleasantly surprised. Um, we are very busy, a lot going on. Um, just yesterday, actually, uh, we were retained. We are filing a habeas as well as a stay on a, on a case where the gentleman had a removal order, was picked up by ICE uh, the day before yesterday, which would be Monday, right? Um, I, and they, ICE, ICE, of course, being... Those bad guys, those uh, immigration cops. Right. So, so this morning, we're getting ready to actually file a, a writ of habeas, uh, which is basically an attempt to get our client released from ICE custody, as well as an emergency stay. So we have been, you know, very busy. Um, I'm, I'm glad. Um, I wasn't sure what would happen when all of this first happened. Um, but we've been very busy. Which is a no, when Nelson talks about a writ of habeas, that he's talking about going to federal court. Um, and and I, again, this is something we've been talking about uh, a lot, and we're going to continue to talk about it. And in fact, Nelson and I were discussing this yesterday. Federal court is, I believe, the wave of the future in a lot of respects with regards to immigration. Uh, as I've been saying, immigration, they don't follow their own rules. Uh, they make rules, very stringent rules these days in, in, in particular, and then they break them. You know, they don't believe that they're subject to the rules. Only we are. Only the public and the immigration bar is subject to the rules. But immigration, the government, they don't have to follow their own rules. So, you know, we tend to disagree with that uh, interpretation. So when immigration says, you know what, we're going to do what we want to do regardless. Well, hey, when PPID comes on board, we say, you know what, uh, 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 can't do that. We're taking you to federal court. And here's an example. You know, we have a case being filed today, a writ of habeas, to get our client out of detention because he shouldn't be there. All right. Or at the very least, to not send them home because they're trying to deport them, all right? This is what we do. And uh, uh, um, I hate to say it, but it's unfortunate, but this is the future because immigration, especially, God help us all, if, if, if uh, DJT gets reelected, this is what we're staring at for, for some time. And, you know, things are not going to get easier for immigrants. And one avenue of relief that luckily we still have is the federal court system. Uh, although even that, they're uh, they're making inroads and making things more difficult. But at you least know, we still have the federal court system as an alternative for- You know, actually, I don't know if you remember, Adam, uh, Conrad had mentioned uh, last week that um, there was several judges from the Board of Immigration Appeals, which is where you go to appeal a case after it's been denied by the immigration court. Right. They had they had offered nine judges buyouts, which they declined just yesterday. Uh, it so happens that these nine judges have been reassigned. Hmm. These okay, are nine so judges that were more or less on what the, the government considers to be on the liberal side of things, pro-immigrant. So they try to find the money to, to get them to retire and leave the bench. So they every time I hear this, new I'm judges, like, whoa, whoa. conservative judges. So they refused. These are good guys. They want to do the right thing. So what does the government do? Re they, reassign reassign they reassigned them. They reassigned. And these were judges that were appointed by who? Obama? By Obama, by the Bush administration. These are long, 
serving right. judges. These judges have been on the board for years. Well, These are me... typically guys that are on the bar. They're, they're either previous immigration lawyers for the government or the previous immigration lawyers a private bar like us. And these guys are, are, are judges that they're for pretty much lifetime appointments. Well, pretty much. You know what, guys? Let, let me jump in there for a minute here and just remind people, uh, not to interject, but to, um, once again, this is Cruising with the Case Handler. You're listening to the attorneys, the immigration attorneys, the, the Conrad Pollocks, a.k.a. the maestro, the uh, Nelson Madrid, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. the maverick. And you heard the cases, the kind of cases that they're dealing with. You can hear that they know of the internals as to what's going on behind the scene in the Department of Homeland Security. Their finger is on the pulse when it comes to immigration. Their finger is on the pulse when it comes to the Department, Department of Homeland Security, which is not on your side. It's like they set up the system to ensure that you don't get through. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the reason why I say to each and every single one of you, use only PPID, all right? Yes, you're getting all this free information on the radio, you're getting all these free consultations, but I can tell you this, do not work on your case yourself. You've got proficient, competent attorneys that will treat you like family, like Adam Handler normally says, make sure you reach out to them. I can't implore you enough. So with that said, dial this number, 844-774-3529. It is a free phone consultation, off the air, privately and confidentially, with an attorney at PPID. So everyone out there, dial the number. The number is 844-774-3529. If you are serious about taking care of your Im immigration situation, make the call to Nelson, make the call to Conrad or any of the other proficient and competent attorneys at PPID. 844-774-3529. Dial that number squeeze. now, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And squeeze, you're following up on what you're just saying. You know, in particular, those people that have criminal issues, those people that may have done something indiscriminate in the past, maybe they got their green cards without immigration finding out about a previous arrest or, or finding out a previous departure or, or lengthy departure from the United States. You know, they are checking. I, I mean, their immigration scrutinizes these applications more thoroughly than ever before. I, I can't I cannot emphasize that enough. They've even created a for the first time, they've created a, a just a section, a, a squad, let's say, that all their function in life is to go through previous applications for naturalization to see if anybody lied on their application, to see if they didn't cross a T or dot an I, all right, to see if they can take away their citizenship. That's all these people do. All right? This is just an example of what the administration is trying to do with regard to the immigrant population. And unfortunately. Uh, we've been talking about the travel ban, that uh, it's a 60-day travel ban that's currently in place. Uh, it looks like there's going to be an announcement coming within the next few days. Usually they do this on a Friday night, so it could happen, for, what, what's tomorrow? The, yeah, the, on the, it could happen Friday night. They like to announce things like this in, on the cover of darkness. Um, they, are, <laughs> they, they, they may be extending this ban to cover uh, non-immigrant visas, work visas, H1s, H2s, J1s. Uh, it, it, it looks like it's coming, folks, and it's just days away in terms of an announcement. And when they do it, it's going to probably be a ban valid for 90 days, maybe even 180 days, six months, you know, which would bring us, of course, past the election. You know, he's going to the, the administration is, is going to try and have this in effect until they're gone. And again, the pretext is going to be jobs, the economy. We have so much unemployment. And on the one hand, they they're crowing on Monday about, oh, the job numbers and unemployment's going down and people are all going back to work. On the other hand, oh, well, you know, unemployment's really bad. We can't bring any foreign workers to compete with U.S. workers. So they like to have it both ways. But unfortunately, it's coming. Yeah. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. And gentlemen, I have had... Uh, a couple of requests, and I want to know what you all think of it. We need to spend at least three minutes um, every day in our show touching on current events. Current three minutes. minutes. Current events. For didn't example, we talk, didn't we just talk about my backyard uh, PI party? <laughs> not, for, example, not for, for example, for um, example, Conrad's a friend here, I'm being sarcastic, DT, uh, is saying that the 75 year old man that was pushed in Buffalo mm -hmm. is with Antifa. Incredible. 
<laughs> you heard that speculation, right? But not, you know? but not surprising. But not surprising. But okay. it's just, and it's unfounded. You not know, to get you started, Conrad. So you so you push him again. So you push him to the ground and and and, and cause his head to bleed. No, well, he's they saying that he was he wasn't pushed that hard and that he deliberately banged his head against the ground so he started bleeding. Okay. I guess that's the the thought process going on there. If there is any thought process going on there. <laughs> anyway, people, log on to Facebook. Give us your comments, okay? All right, give us your comments and tell us what you think of that. By the way, the number for the attorneys, the immigration side, eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. We will talk in Lent, ladies and gentlemen, on Facebook as we do each and every single day. But we're putting some pep in our step here on, of course, this great show that Adam Handler and myself decided to, of course, you know get going right here on 93.5 but also on facebook speaking of adam handler coming up straight ahead he's going to be giving you a true success story and also adam and nelson and conrad did you know that they pulled the show bad boys bad boys what you gonna do did what they? you gonna do they did. Yeah. 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 yeah they pulled it it's gone yeah, it's, it's dead out. no really? more yeah, yeah. man that yeah, show's been on for what 20 plus years right Long time. Yeah. 30 years it's gone it's been pulled because of everything that's going on. It's, they said it's not favorable to have it on. So that show is dead. Um, Phoenix, complete. I'm sure there's uh, some other reality show that uh, the target audience can turn to in their uh, channels to. What's that? Uh, the, the Wars? What's that other? Something Wars? Something. <laughs> I forget okay. the name of the show. Know. You know. All right. Let's go to, let's <laughs> anyway, go to let, let's... Let, that's enough for, for our current <laughs> events or whatever is happening, our topical stuff, you know? You know, there's an expression There's an expression right now, the millennials, they say, oh, okay, boomer. All right, all right. The okay, <laughs> boomer. Okay, <laughs> boomer. Uh, no, yeah, let's talk a little. Let's, talk little. let's get a true sexual story to personally um, decide. They, you know, they fight over something. I don't know. It's the wa laundromat wars or, or some or tire wars, or I, I can't remember the name of the show. <laughs> Storage wars? There you go. <laughs> They're fighting over who, who who gets to get in the locker from the Steve storage. I, I yeah, get it. I, I have to admit, I, I'm not big on the reality shows. You know, I never even watched The Apprentice. God, you know, God strike me down. You know, I never even watched The Apprentice. <laughs> well, one day, one day, Conrad, I'm going to walk in your office and go, "You're fired." <laughs> well, uh, hopefully not. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, All right. Uh, but uh, anyway, make no mistake, people. This is fun show today. So listen, on personal injury immigration. All right, yeah, Adam. Let's this talk a little personal but, injury. But wait, but this. Well, let's just make it clear. This is a non-partisan show. Oh, yeah. exactly. Well, I <laughs> actually, exactly. I actually, I actually have some. After we flip over um, to top of the hour, I actually have some questions about party lines in, in immigration. So I want to get into that actually. But um, again, my name is Adam Handler. I'm your case handler. Um, again, thrilled that you're with us this morning. We've been doing this. I mean, I've been uh, doing the radio for almost two decades now, and this is the most consistent uh, show I've ever done. Um, you know, I was on in the afternoons with other broadcasters on the station, and, you know, I get 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there. And, you know, listen, those guys showed me the love, of course, but, you know, Squeeze, you really encouraged me to, to really dig deep into this and provide not just, you know, commentary about personal injury, but depth um, as to our practice, depth as to us as professionals. So thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I'll actually, cause I, I, I feel, I do feel bad that we didn't invite you yesterday to, to that backyard party. So to make up for it. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, kidding, man. I'm gonna let you um, pick I'm going to let you pick a case to talk about. All right. So Wait, but we weren't invited either. None of us yeah, I was invited. Say. <laughs> but, but I don't, you know, I at least want to hang out with Squeeze, you know? I mean, you know. <laughs> Oh, so you don't uh, want to no, hang out with Conrad and Nelson. I'm just Nelson's kidding. not even saying a word. Yeah, yeah. I know you're going to get beat Nelson up. didn't even know this was going down until this morning. So um, I'll, let you, I'll let you, dealer's choice, David. Wh wh which get, take, Talk about a case. Which case do you want to talk about? All right. So you know what? I am always going for the, the cases that, it, that is over a million dollars. Today, I'm going to pick one that is under a million dollars because okay. they're equally important. Down. So let's go. I want to go to the one that is um, for $890,000. That settlement one right there. Yeah. 
And unfortunately, we, we don't have a link to that. I, I think maybe um, that person wanted their a case to be confident. They wanted it to be private. Okay, so yeah. let's go below. Let's go, let's go to the $835,000. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so $835. And we, we did talk about this case, but you know I love talking about it because it, yep. it's an important case um, uh, to this client, of, of course. Hold on, let me just delete this. And you see everybody on my web, everybody on Facebook right now, you see when you go to my website, you know, somebody immediately asks, how, how can we help you? And we're looking at the casehandler.com. And if you're listening on the radio right now, please do me a favor, check out Case Handler on Facebook or Case Handler on Instagram. And uh, this was a uh, auto accident, but also a workplace accident. Why? Um, Jim uh, was a construction worker in a vehicle on the uh, uh, Cuomo Bridge, which is the old Tappan Zee Bridge, um, making sure that uh, vehicles are in the right, correct lane of traffic and, and not near the, the actual construction work. So we, he's sitting in his, his truck with the big, you know, arrow, you know, blinking, state of the left, state of the left. And as he's sitting there, a tractor trailer not paying attention blasts into his vehicle. And you can see here, uh, you know, the damage in the middle photo that is the damage sustained to, to Jim's vehicle. And then on the right, you see the, the, the tractor trailer, which actually rolled over and, uh, and, um, and, and caused, I remember, an eight or nine hour backup of traffic. Uh, but the point of this case is, is that Jim actually was a prior client of ours. And he was a volunteer firefighter as well. And he also got into another accident in which somebody ran into his back and he had a surgery to his neck. Um, this case, the, he went back to work and this accident re-aggravated uh, the injury that he previously had. And he actually required a revision to his spine surgery. Now the truck obviously was not uh, disputing the liability, meaning they weren't disputing they caused the accident, but they certainly were disputing the injury, saying that these are all pre-existing injuries. We shouldn't have to pay for it. Um, to make a long story short, uh, we were able to, through medical evidence, show that that was not the case. And we were able to get them 835000 Now, why only 835000 I mean, this case could have gone for probably double that, but the truck had a million-dollar insurance policy. And out of that million-dollar insurance policy, the damage to the vehicles and the damage to the bridge had to be paid for. So who do you think got the money first? The, oh state, boy. Of New, the state of New York or poor old Jim? Who do you think it was, Squeeze? <laughs> of course, the state of New York. The state of New York, right. So what we had to do is we had to supervise it to make sure that every penny um, was being paid out correctly. We didn't want the state to get a dollar more than they were entitled to. And then, of course, we took the rest and, and sent Jim um, on his way, tax-free money, eight hundred thirty-five thousand. You know, the, the best we could have done for him. But you know what? They offered us, you know, seven hundred at one time. And we said, no, we, we need. It's already limited enough. Give us every last penny. And the point of this story is, is that like every other case we deal with, we go for the maximum compensation. We go for the most goo goo we can possibly get you because we understand yeah, you yeah. have one chance to get it right. No redos. Jim could never go back and say, I need more money, right? We got all his medical bills paid. We got us all his time out of work paid. And then of course, 835,000 on top of that. So one chance, one choice, your case handler, 844-774-3529, 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID law. The only way we will be your lawyers, whether it's immigration or personal injury or any of the uh, criminal or matrimonial. But for right now, let's just talk injury and, and immigration. The only way we will be your lawyers is if you have that number saved and you use it. We will not know you exist. We don't hang out at Federal Plaza. We don't hang out at, at the emergency room. We don't come up to you at the scene of the accident. Unless you call us and say, we want you to be our attorneys, you will not have the best possible attorneys representing you and your family when either disaster strikes or an immigration issue comes up. So again, 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, very important that you uh, store the number. And you know, let me take some time out and say to everyone out there, could you all do me a favor? You're listening to the radio right now, 93.5 FM. 
Do you have friends? Do you have family members? Well, listen, these attorneys have proven themselves time and time over again. Can you, everybody who's listening to the station, do me a personal favor, not even for the attorneys, do me a personal favor. Dial the number, okay? Because I know that you will need this number in the future when it comes. You're going to need an attorney at some point for something. Maybe it's buying a house. I don't know. All right. Immigration, personal injury. Dial the number. Let it ring for 10 seconds. Adam will tell me if you're dialing. 10 seconds. This way I know that you are storing the number. I know how important it is to have good attorneys around me. It's very, very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. So I want every single one of my brothers and sisters to have the number of a good law firm. Here's the number, dial it right now and let it ring. 844-774-3529. I'll be slow. 844-774-3529. You will get a free immigration consultation off the air. And that's a phone consultation with an attorney, absolutely free. 844-774-3529, the same number for personal injury, criminal defense, real estate, and more. 844-774-3529. That is 844-774-3529. 844-PPIDLAW. Going to the Facebook side. All right. There we go. <clears throat> phones, the phones so, are ringing. That's great. I, I, can I ask a quick question, though? Because I, I don't want sure. to forget about this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we try not to be too political on this show because certainly we, we don't want to offend everybody. And we, we certainly understand as attorneys that everybody has a voice. Everybody has a right to express their opinion. And we never want to um, disengage or, or, or alienate um, people just because of the way they feel politically. But... I guess my question is, rather than talk about party lines, you know, we've been talking about individuals and I think our, our, our opinions about Donald Trump um, have been made very clear on this show, uh, sometimes too clear, but, but very show. I think everybody understands where we stand um, with respect to how we feel his confidence is as, as a leader uh, of this country. But, but Conrad, you've certainly been doing this long enough. Does it, has there been Republican administrations that have worked with the immigrant community that have, you know, not necessarily put roadblocks like this in place to legitimate status? Oh boy. Here we go. Um, good job. Nice softball question there. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let me just, boom, let me knock that one out of the park. Here we go. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually curious because you mentioned uh, people were, that were appointed by Obama and Bush. So obviously they appointed people, you know, uh, fair judges on those administrations. Okay. Well, uh, give me, give me a second and I'll, I'll gather my thoughts here. Well, first off, oh boy. Uh, clearly there has never been an administration as with that has demonstrated more antipathy, more dislike, more hatred of immigrants than the current one. I mean, that goes without saying. You don't need me to say that. Just open a newspaper, turn on any radio, and, or just listen to our, our, our leaders' tweets or read them. Um, but let's go back to uh, Ronald Reagan. By, by, by a large consensus of people, you know, are the best president in, in, in the last 50 years, you know, I, I, by a lot of people's uh, estimations. 1986, there was a major immigration law passed, which created amnesty. It was the last legalization program, created a massive legalization program for people that were here illegally, and including farm workers and all sorts of people. And in return, uh, they created employer sanctions for the first time. So there was, a, there was, it was a bipartisan bill. There were Republicans that were, in, in fact, it was a Republican sponsored bill. Basically it was, it was a compromise on the one hand uh, for those pro-immigrant crowd. Um, it created an amnesty program by which many people were able to get the green cards. And we've seen the ramifications of that since then. Uh, many people are here legally and, and product, leading productive lives as US citizens now. Um, and on the other hand, the hardliners got employer sanctions for the first time. Employer sanctions being, if you if an employer hired an illegal alien, they could be fine. Um, now we can, and this is 1986 when this happened. Uh, and I was I was a brand new lawyer. I was just breaking in. I was going at it for a couple of years at that point, and uh, it was an interesting time in the 80s. But um, 
subsequently, um, or I should say, there are various viewpoints on whether that was a successful program or not. Some people say yes, some, some people say no. Employer sanctions have been substantially hardened and much more enforced. Uh, the enforcement is much stronger, especially currently. But with each passing decade, the, the sanctions have gotten stricter and stricter, uh, and employers are subject to higher and higher fines. Um, yeah, it's debatable whether it's worked or not, because the idea was with employer sanctions, it would reduce or eliminate the magnet that attracted illegal workers to come to the United States to work. So if they couldn't find jobs, they wouldn't come. That was the uh, the idea. Obviously, it hasn't worked that way. Um, I mean, there are a lot of reasons for that. I'm not a sociologist, so I'm not going to get into that at this point. But there are many, many socioeconomic reasons for, for why it didn't work, and in a lot of respects, why it did work. Um, but there you go. Reagan, the great communicator, Republican president, eight years. And again, you ask most Republicans these days, they will say he was, in fact, a lot of Democrats might say it's the best president of our lifetime. Not my opinion, but... He was reasonable, and he also recognized, as did George, as did George Bush after him, and George W. Bush after him. They were all in favor of immigration compromises, all in favor of legalization programs. It's the hardliners in, in Congress that really have have put up the roadblocks. And now, of course, with our, the current administration, you know, all of the, the ideas that the, the current administration has put into effect, uh, and and their ideology that they've followed. Uh, this was all fringe stuff 10, 20 years ago. Unfortunately, as with many other things, the current administration has brought the fringe into more of the mainstream, just like these tweets, this tweet for the, this poor guy in Buffalo that got shoved to the ground. You know, 10, 20 years ago, you would never have heard that. Today it's on the front page of the newspaper on the New York Times. 20 years ago, you, you would never have heard of such a thing. It wouldn't be in the a, a, a conspiracy, theory, conspiracy theory like that would be reported on in the New York Times? Come on, never, never, never. Now, though, all of these types of things have been brought from the fringes into the mainstream so that everybody sees them. And unfortunately, I'm sure, I mean, if you look at his tweets, uh, you know, following that tweet yesterday, I guarantee you there are people there, his followers, that are retweeting it and saying it's true and it's a conspiracy and it was all set up. I, he's not the only one saying it, and that's why he does it. You know, he divide, gets divide and conquer. Yep, that's why he does it, and, and it's nonsense. The art but, of war. It's nonsense. It's total nonsense. Art of In fact, war. This guy, yeah. getting back to that guy, uh, George, I, I forget his last name. This guy is—he's at every protest apparently in Buffalo. I was reading a biography of, of him yesterday, and he's—he's he's a protester. He's not some guy they just plant Antifa just planted there. Right. You know, let, right. let's find some old white guy. You know that the, that he could stand in front of a cop so they could throw him on the ground and put him in the hospital. I mean, that's the <laughs> there's the theory. Right? I don't think that's the way it happened. Right? This guy has been hitting every protest in Buffalo, and he apparently is a very fervent uh, anti-violence. Uh, right. That's uh, that's what he said. Really, yeah. you know, really cares about the about the Black Lives Matter program, and, and you know, unfortunately, wrong place, wrong time, I guess. Okay, uh, gentlemen, I want to ask you guys a question. I know we 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 we've gone off on a tangent in a couple of ways this morning, and I do appreciate everyone who's watching us on Facebook, and we really, really, really do appreciate it. But I'd like to ask all three of you something here, and and, and you know we've run a very consistent program, as Adam said. Is it possible for us to do like a show this evening? All right. You know, I, I would love to jump on. I mean, a lot of people have been saying, okay, why can't you guys even do one show in the evening? So I'm asking, I'm calling you all out, okay, on Facebook. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard me. When people are texting me, I'm asking Conrad, I'm asking Adam, I'm asking Nelson, who's got his hand covered over his mouth, like, what the is Squeeze doing? All right, you know, I would love for you guys, even just do one, anytime, anytime in the evening after five. For even 30 minutes, guys. 30 minutes. 20 minutes. All right. I'm I'm we, I'm game. Can we do it tomorrow night? Is that possible? Sure. I well, can do it tomorrow. Adam? Tonight, tonight I have a previous engagement, but I can do it. Nelson and Conrad is in. If, yeah. Con if Conrad and hearing. Nelson are in, I'm in. You know, I'm uh, <laughs> never What's gonna... the hesitation, Adam? It's just one show every other week then. Okay? One I... show. 
I, you know, this is this is the morning. It's such a good light for us. You know, I mean, <laughs> Conrad's by his window. You know, you got you got the the lighting in the back. I, I, you know, all right, yes. Let's if the people want Thank it, you, you guys pick the time. People what Doesn't they want. matter. Let's Doesn't do matter. it Tom, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. You, you got it. You got a date. All right. The general oh, may be sleep. The general may be sleeping by then, but uh, we'll, the three of us can do it. So wait a minute. Let me understand this correctly. So we're not going to do the show tomorrow morning. Instead, oh no 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 no, 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 no. We are doing a show. We're, that's never going to stop. So, <laughs> you know? so two for. That's never going to do a two for tomorrow. Two, two for one. Two for right. one. Yeah. All right. And, and, and speaking about um, tomorrow, also one of um, tomorrow, my daughter is graduating. Um, she's graduating middle school. Um, so, so congratulations. Um, yeah, right. thank you. She's she has blown. She's straight A's. Like everything is 100, 100, 100. She's just well, straight A's. She's always been after her mom. <laughs> so I got to do the drive by graduation thing with her tomorrow morning <laughs> between <laughs> between nine and nine thirty. So I may be leaving you guys a little bit early, but everything will be you know under right. control. So, just one thing. So that, that's fair. So, so we'll, we'll do uh, the morning show. Uh, uh, live on 93.5 and then we'll give all our facebook listeners something something to sink their teeth into in the evening that's that's fair no, no everything will be everything will be as normal it's under full control here but right. this is us but anyway we got immigration questions by the way folks um, i'm very happy about the people who have been actually uh storing the number dialing the number and so forth it's extremely important that that people do that it's great that you are doing that ladies and gentlemen Thank you so much for storing the number of good attorneys. Now, we go back and forth about different topics and different areas of law and all of that. However, it's extremely important that you understand that this law firm, it's not where Adam is doing immigration and criminal defense. There are departments. Everyone is in their own lane, ladies and gentlemen, but they work together, okay? Immigration crosses over with criminal defense. It crosses over with personal injury. So that is the reason why we say, Go to PPID, but not only that, they have an individual that we call the general. It's one of the proudest things, uh, uh, you know, that I that 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 I have here to, you know, tout and boast to people. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. We got a general over here, and that is Alan K, an attorney, ladies and gentlemen. This man have the links. Them he has the connections. All right. Okay, it is great. And it, just about every week, Conrad or Nelson will say to, hey, Squeeze, so uh, the general, you know, made a call for us today, you know, to those guys who invited the party. Like, every week, I'm hearing a story. So and it's that's the truth. what I'm talking about. Yeah. And not, not, no. just, not just Squeeze, not just uh, the general. He's got over 50 years of experience. You know, which believable, which not many people can say they have, right? Anything, <laughs> uh, uh, right? <laughs> and, 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 so, who would you, I mean, Facebook, Facebook viewers, who else would you want to go with? If it's immigration, make it PPID, doesn't matter where you are, okay? Get a free consultation from them, talk to them, okay? Get some answers, a free phone consultation with an attorney, and with depth like that. Man, I'll be bragging from here until uh, my ass will be bragging all the way to the end. Okay, <laughs> seriously speaking, but, but squeeze, I would not go anywhere else. You know, squeeze, I would it's the truth. With PPID. Yeah, it is the truth. You know, we you know we could hypothetically wheel Alan K down to immigration, ah. put him out in front there, <laughs> the doors open, and as we're wheeling him through the doors, everybody is saluting him, General, General, nice to see you again. <laughs> I told you. I, I, I don't I'm see that happen. right upstairs to the section chief and they Mr. K, what can I do for you today? Yeah. That's how it goes. Well, I don't, you know, I don't, go ahead, Adam, go ahead. I don't, I don't see that happening because he's not going to be, we're not going to be wheeling. We, he's going to be wheeling us. Like I oh, said, yeah. this, this guy, <laughs> he, he, who knows how old he is, but this guy is with his bag, with his rolling suitcase, in his trench coat, in the rain, in the snow, banging it out, left and right, nonstop, and he's been doing it for decades. So you'll, you'll see, he'll be out, you know, outlasting us all. Uh, you, you know, know it's in his blood. He can't stop. He cannot fre stop. Frequently, when you're dealing with the government, you know, sure, it's important what you know, but 
just as important, and in fact, frequently more important is who you know. I, I learned that very early on. You know, my dad was an immigration lawyer and a, and a practicing attorney for 20 something years uh, before I joined him in, 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 the, in the mid 80s. And one of the first things I learned, even before I was a lawyer, I used to work there when I was in college and law school in the summers. One of the first things he taught me was keep your friends close, keep your mouth. No, I'm kidding. Uh, one, of the first, <laughs> one of the first things he said to me was, <laughs> and he would, he, would bring, he would bring me down to immigration and he would introduce me to judges, he would introduce me to trial attorneys and he would say, listen, listen, youngster, you need to remember who these people are, know their faces, remember their phone numbers because there's going to come a time when you're going to have somebody who's locked up or somebody who needs something done quickly and you can make a phone call or you can come and visit this person and he will give you direct access. You know, look, it's just the way things are. This is life. You know, and when you're dealing with the government, a lot, as I said, it is important what you know, but it is equally as important who you know. And you know, Squeeze, I'm sorry, Conrad. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, yeah. you know, periodically immigration um, has... Kind of like a, a, I don't know what you want to call it. It's kind of a Q&A type of thing where they have all of their field office directors, uh, the supervisors, and so on and so forth. Um, and I went with the general. Mm -hmm. um, this is a true story. Yeah. I thought, I, I, I told, well, I think I told you the story, Conrad. Yeah. There, was, there was field office directors saying, is that Alan Kay? Do you think he'll remember me? I felt like I was with a celebrity. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, and they were going up to him and saying, you know, hi, Mr. K, how are you? I mean, again, the guy's been doing it for a very, very long time. And this was just, again, we were there. I was there with him for about an hour, an hour and a half. And I was taken aback, you know, um, because I had never seen this in person. I had heard about it, you know, but I think it's different when you hear about something and you actually see it unfolding in front of you well you know also what it is you know, immigration now i mean it's still a relatively small practice area relative to personal injuries and trial attorneys and so on in, in the united states but back in the 60s back in the 70s even into the 80s um you know immigration was still a, a very small field so there weren't that many lawyers out there like there are today um and especially in New York, which New York has always been a center, a hub for immigrants coming to, to live in the United States. And a guy like my dad, uh, a guy like Alan Kay, you know, they were a relative handful of lawyers out there, especially in New York, that people got to know. And, you know, again, there might be a thousand guys today, but then there were maybe 30, you know, so... Alan has been around a long time. And again, I know because I know it from my dad's history and that's, and I learned, at, at, you know, at, at his bootstraps and um, it, it still carries through to this day. That's why you can, and Nelson, you can walk into immigration with a guy like Alan and, mm -hmm. and the old timers there, the people, the veterans, the people that have been there a long time, they know him because he's been coming there for the last 30, 40 years. And he, did, he didn't just break in yesterday, like a lot right. of the immigrant <clears throat> employers that are practicing are. And that's the reason why I say to everyone that's watching this, everyone that's listening, that's the reason why, that's one of the reasons why you choose PPID. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. 844-774-3529. Here's one that came in. We have a WhatsApp channel that we post on the, uh, on the Facebook page, ladies and gentlemen, and the questions come in. And here's one, someone D says, good morning. Does receiving emergency Medicaid falls under the public charge? And will that affect someone who is adjusting their status? And she's actually watching us right now and waiting for the answer to that. Oh, yours, uh, Mr. Mr. Madrid, Maverick. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just. Uh... <laughs> I, I, I did that on purpose. I noticed it. Was <laughs> no, I just, I just, yeah, listen, he's like, he's like, I uh, just, uh, I just uh, signed uh, up. I just signed up another client. <laughs> I was just reading the email. So go ahead. I'm sorry. And by the way, kudos, man. Kudos. Thank you. Thank go, you. Nelson, go PPID. Go. Thank you. All right. Man, you guys are great. I mean, listen, $120 million plus on the personal injury side. And now you guys are rocking the Caribbean community and beyond when it comes to immigration. Right. But, right. but anyway, the answer to this person's question, as long as it's emergency Medicaid, it shouldn't be an issue. 
Non-emergency, different story. That is one of the factors. That is a negative factor, a big one. Uh, but emergency Medicaid, I don't believe, is a, is a negative factor. So you're okay. All right. But, but it's very important that people understand we're going to be expounding more on the public charge as we do each and every single day. People, please. D, I know you're watching this, and, and I know a lot of people are watching this. Um, and please share this. With, just share it on your timelines. Don't do your case yourself. I'm actually stating that. Don't. Because it's too tedious. It's too complicated. It's complex. You have heard these attorneys here say that they have heard of other attorneys on the outside who are saying that this is, you know, they, don't, they can't even figure out the, the, the instructions and all of that stuff. But that's the reason why you go to PPID. We've got the general. We've got the, the Conrads. We've got the Nelsons. They know what they're doing. They, they, they were the first to speak about this public charge on this station. No one else is. There is no other consistent program on the station. There's no one out there, I believe, that has enough knowledge about immigration like these guys. So don't do your case yourself. At least call and get a free phone consultation and then work something out with them to, to retain them. All right. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Make that link, make that call. Now, before we jump to the other question, let's flip it over to personal injury. I mentioned it when the show started um, that... If you are out of status and you're here in this country, you still do have rights. God forbid you get into an accident or get hurt in an accident. Even if you're working off the books at a construction site or wherever, you still have rights if you get hurt. And that's the reason why we have the top personal injury attorney, Adam Handler, to deal with such a situation. That's the reason why we've got the immigration attorneys on board. God forbid you are afraid because I have known from the past, gentlemen, people who got hurt in an accident and they were out of status. This was in the Bronx. And they refused to actually hire a personal injury attorney because they're out of status. And Adam, I don't care what you say, man. People are still out there getting into accidents and is afraid to come to you, okay, because of the immigration status. But look, we got the Conrads. We got the Nelson. I need for you to explain to people that they have nothing to worry about where the immigration status is concerned if they get hurt in an accident, especially here in New York State. Yeah, listen, uh, your rights of recovery are uh, notwithstanding your immigration status. And that's for anything. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's not easy uh, to realize this and, you know, probably uneasy to exercise these rights. But, you know, if you're hurt uh, on United States soil, uh, specifically here in New York, you are 100 percent entitled to money, regardless of your immigration status, regardless of you're here. Uh, visiting, regardless of you're here out of status, or I hate using the word illegal or legal, but you know, let's just say we're using those nomenclatures and uh, you're illegal, you're entitled to money. You're also entitled to uh, apply for child support. If you're married, if you, if you have, a, I'm sorry, if you have a child with an, another individual, whether you're the, the father or the mother, you have the right to visitation, to custody, to uh, support uh, of your children, so and access to the courts, and that's really what it is. Nobody's checking um, your uh, green card when when you go into a courthouse anywhere. No, no they just don't care. Um, and we've obtained in the course of my career, like I said, we've done you know over 120 million. Uh, let's say 20 to 30 percent of that money has been for people that uh, either at a status or current in the process of adjusting their status at the time. So we've done some incredible things for people and also opening bank accounts. We've had situations and we could probably talk about more about this another time that, you know, somebody is at a status and uh, working on uh, obtaining legal status in the United States. And now all of a sudden they have a million dollar settlement. What are they doing with that money? I mean, they're certainly not going to put it in a coffee can and bury it in the backyard. Right we're able to open bank accounts for them. Um, so we do everything the proper way, the right way. Uh, and it just shows you, you know, what we're able to do as a law firm. We are very, very powerful in being able to achieve successful results for you. Uh, again, we can, never get, we can never guarantee a successful yeah. outcome, but man, nobody, nobody, nobody is going to fight harder for you than Paul, Paul Isaac DeSico. I, I can assure you that. 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. Adam, I have a question for you. Um, I had an immigration client who told me that he had a personal injury case with another lawyer. 
and that that lawyer basically pressured him into settling, saying that the plaintiffs had threatened to call immigration on him. The defendants, yeah. yeah. The defendants, I'm sorry. Is that, is that even true? I mean, listen, if I was a defense attorney and I knew or found out that the, the, the person suing my client uh, was out of status, I probably would, I probably would say that. Um, and I've had actually instances in which attorneys have said that. But at a deposition, when my client is asked, what is your status here in the United States of America? You know what comes out of my mouth? What Objection? Works? Exactly. It's totally irrelevant. In fact, I remember we were in trial years ago. I was representing a Filipino client. She was out of status. She took the witness stand, okay? This is in the Bronx. Um, she was injured uh, in the supermarket. A crazy story. You know, this tall tower of water bottles. She took one off and the whole thing collapsed on top of her because it wasn't stacked correctly. And uh, the defense attorney, you know, asked, uh, her last name was... Uh, let's just call it uh, Smith. Mrs. Smith, what's your, what's your status here in the United States? Objection. Judge says sustained, calls us for a sidebar and says, and I, I don't want to curse, but she said it, she cursed. She goes, if you pull this SHIT in my courthouse courtroom ever again, I'll make sure you never see daylight in this Bronx courthouse. Immigration has no place in this process rip this guy and knew you know what we wind up winning the case 600,000 but I know that he was trying to taint that jury um to you know because juries can be funny you know and right. although it has nothing to do with the process if a juror thinks hey maybe this person that's that they don't deserve money it's highly prejudicial it probably would have been a mistrial to tell you the truth uh if he was uh, allowed to answer that question but it has status has nothing to do with personal injury again Call us. The phone call is free. The consultation is free. Personal injury, immigration, uh, the cons consult's free. And, and shame on that lawyer for pressuring the client because you know what? That lawyer just wanted to make a quick buck and be done with the case because we work on a contingency fee, right? So if he felt that maybe his client could be deported or, or get nothing, then that lawyer would get nothing. That, that lawyer is greedy. That lawyer is looking after himself or herself first. Shame on them. Give us a call though. Happy to help. Hopefully you don't need us, but if you do, 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-Law. Absolutely. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cruising with a Case Handler. Catch each and every single weekday at 8.30 a.m. right here on 93.5 FM and also on Facebook and also on Sundays, Saturdays and Sundays at, of course, Saturday, 6 p.m. between 6 and 8. We talk a lot about it, get you revved up and make sure that you reach out to the firm. Sunday's the same thing. And as we all unfold and go back out there, it's going to get even crazier. So right now, you may want to just dial the number, store the number, and get things going now when it comes to your immigration status or having the number for a good personal injury attorney. That number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Quickly, let me just reel off these questions here, gentlemen. Um, what's the next step if the I-130 is approved and the file is sent to NBC? I already got the case and invoice number. However, the beneficiary is in the state. So do the beneficiary files the I-485 or go back home uh, to their country for a visa interview. P.S. F2A visa category. Um, it, it depends. You know, I don't know if the person entered on a visa, if that visa is still valid. If the person is out of status, um, they're going to need a waiver. Depending on the length of time the person has been out of status, they could potentially be subject to a three-year bar or a 10-year bar. You know, um, I, I, I will assume, I will assume that the person has been out of status for six months. Um, and if the person has been out of status for at least six months, they will need a waiver. It's not as simple as just filing a 485 an adjustment of status, they will need a waiver because they've accrued unlawful presence. They would need gotcha. to demonstrate a uh, hardship to a qualifying relative who would be a parent, spouse, or child who is either a permanent resident or a U.S. citizen. Absolutely. Yeah, that person, hey, I'm going I'm to go out on a limb here. And I'm going <laughs> to assume that this person is illegally in the United States. F2A is a spouse category or a, child, or a minor child category takes a couple of years, two, three years to complete that process, I am pretty confident this person's out of status, which means they're not going to be able to adjust status, which means they're going to have to leave the country. 
and process. That's why the case is at the National Visa Center in the first place. They're going to have to process the, at the U.S. consulate in their country, and they're going to need that waiver that, Ms. that the Maverick was just talking about. Okay. Uh, once and again, uh, that for... waiver, by the way, do not leave the country without that waiver because they ain't going to be coming back for 10 years if they do. All right? So they should, if they had a competent attorney or if they were getting properly advised, they would have begun the waiver process already. As soon as you pay those fee bills, they paid $445 to the National Visa Center. As soon as they pay those fee bills, they should have been ready to file that waiver application because the waiver application is going to take a good eight months to get it approved if it gets approved. So they probably they probably lost some time already, but they need to get that waiver going. Okay. Once again, folks, this is Cruiser with a case Sandra, 844-PPIDLAW. Someone type that in on the screen for me in the comment section, 844-PPIDLAW. Here's another one. After getting married in the U.S. on a K-1 and then applying for a change of status, can the immigrants still leave the country at leisure travel, or do they have to remain here until they get their green card? Well, first off, they apply as, they come in as a fiancé. They have to marry the person who applied for the fiancé visa, right? They can't marry anybody else. That's number one. Um, so they get the fiancé visa. They have to get married within 120 days of entering with the K-1. Once they apply for adjustment of status, after they get married, uh, in order for them to travel, they need permission. They cannot just leave the country. If he leaves the country without permission after filing that adjustment of status, I-45 application, they will abandon, They will be deemed to have abandoned their adjustment application and they will be stuck and they will be between a rock and a hard place when they try to come back. Do not do it. You must apply for advanced parole. That's permission to travel. That takes three to four months to get typically, probably longer now because immigration is, uh, well, they were closed, but they're moving a lot more slowly than usual. And if you need to travel anytime soon, you're going to need to do that on an expedited basis. And, you know, I just we just happen to know a guy who is really good at getting us access to get those expedites. So if you want some help, give us a ring. The general, Alan K can help where that is concerned. And he's exclusively at the law firm PPID, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and Nisiko. It's been a great show. It's been a wonderful show, but it's only great and wonderful, truly, if you, if you share this page with all your friends and everyone that you think may need it. It's only good and right and correct if we do this. Share the number also. Dial the number 844-774-3529 for good attorneys, <laughs> all right? We've got, of course, the maestro that you just heard from, Conrad Pollock, the managing partner and practicing attorney at the firm PPID. You've heard of the Nelson Madrid with well over 13 years. We call him the Maverick because if you have had any kind of arrest or anything like that, you shouldn't go to any other law firm. You should be choosing this firm. You've also, of course, got the $120 million man. That's what I'm calling him, $120 million man, because he has settled that much in money where, of course, personal injury cases are concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a, number, a few more times. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I am David Squeeze and I truly, fully endorse PPID. They have proven themselves in so many different ways, and I would like for you to have that number, 844-774-3529. Yes, it has been an attorney advertisement brought to you by the law firm of PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Prize us do not guarantee similar outcome, but ladies and gentlemen, this is a great firm, a phenomenal firm that is advocating for us as immigrants, advocating for a lot of people out there were not immigrants, but advocating, advocating for our people, period. Make sure you reach out to them. 844-774-3529. Until next time, we're out.